But um, for now, let's stick with the NBA, Rob G. And Draymond Green, he should be on vacation somewhere, right? On an island, maybe, enjoying himself, soaking up some sun, um, enjoying the beach and all that, by the pool, the maybe the lazy river, all that. No, nah, because remember he said the podcast is as important as basketball to him. So there is no offseason so. anymore. So he's going to work year-round. He got okay. to. Okay, well, he is providing us with content, all right? And so he was on, they did a joint podcast, which I like, great idea. His podcast on the volume, the Draymond Green Show, and J.J. Reddick's Old Man and the Three. And so in their conversation, Draymond said this about LeBron James. They asked me a question in the press conference, like, how does the IQs rank against the Boston and LeBron James? Like, shut up. (laughs) What are we talking about? It's easier because you're not playing LeBron James, who is like the ultimate mastermind in our game. And so you're not playing that chess match with him. It's a lot easier to play chess match with anybody else. But against LeBron, it's different. And Bron can prepare his guys for what's to come. Al Horford couldn't prepare them for what was to come. So you know that going in, and you know... (laughs) No, no disrespect to Al Horford. Al Horford catching strays. (laughs) Sucks to be Al Horford right now, man. Right, right. I mean, look, I get what he meant was that LeBron has been to the finals. Right. So he can get guys ready and let them and do the best you can and the most you can and getting them to understand the stage and the magnitude of the moment, the gravity of the situation, which Al Horford and no one on the Celtics could do. So that's what he meant. But, yeah, it, it definitely sounded like Al caught a stray. And by the time it's relayed to Al, he will think he caught a stray, and we'll see if he answers back. <laughs> His sister <laughs> so, will, for sure. Right, 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 right. So what you what you think of Draymond's comments, Rob G? Look, I'm a Laker fan, um, which means that by default I'm a LeBron James fan. But this Only is, by default. See, you a LeBron hater, though. Oh, I was I was a hater when he was uh, the first go-round in Cleveland and then in Miami for sure. thousand percent. However, it, this is now the second time in about two weeks that Draymond Green has pointed out how smart and how wise and how ahead of the curve LeBron James is when it comes to the game of basketball. So it got me thinking. If LeBron James is this basketball savant mentally, where I believe that Draymond said he is the smartest player to ever play this game. Yeah, he, I don't know if he said it in this podcast. The, but that was at the media availability weeks. at the finals. So right. if that's if that's true, and if LeBron James is the most physically gifted NBA player we've ever seen, which he definitely has a case, being that he's what, 6'8", 260, can run like a LeBron, point guard, jump right. out the he's gym. In the, he's in the discussion. Right, so if he's that, if he's Bo Jackson of basketball, And he spent the last decade of his NBA career alongside at least one Hall of Fame level teammate. Mm. If all those things are true, is it then fair to say that LeBron's career has been a disappointment? Wow. Wow. I think a disappointment is too strong. And and I'm look, I don't think LeBron is the smartest player ever to play the game. I think he's up there. I think he's of an incredibly smart player person and player and his the tales of him knowing all the plays for his own team and the other team the opponent the tales of him calling out opponents plays the tales of him you know knowing not only his responsibilities in a given action but all the other four players on the court with him their responsibilities are legendary right right so he's an incredibly smart player but i i think magic johnson is the smartest player ever. And I say, and and I think there are a few others that would have a case over LeBron. And I say that because LeBron, as smart a player as he is, for the bulk of his career, he's been ball dominant. Right. And I don't think that's the smartest way to play basketball. I think the smartest way to play basketball is five-man basketball, like the Warriors play, like the Spurs played when they dismantled Miami in the finals in 2014. To be honest, like teams kind of used to play back in the day, and I'm not trying to, you know, be the old no, man get off my lawn, but that's right. True. Like Michael Jordan shot the ball a ton. And I'm not, Michael Jordan was not the smartest player to play either, so I'm not making that case for him. But my point is, Rob G, he wasn't ball dominant. And we had B.J. Armstrong on the show. 
And what did he say? He said the greatest thing about Michael was that he learned how to dominate the game in two or three dribbles. Right. And what that does is it allows your other teammates to constantly touch the ball, constantly be in rhythm, constantly feel like they're a part of the action. And if one or two of those other teammates is like really nice to get theirs. Right. So Magic got his, Kareem got his, Worthy got his, right? And with LeBron, it's kind of like only two guys can get theirs. LeBron and D-Wade in Miami. Uh, Chris Bosh became basically a role player. LeBron and Kyrie in Cleveland. Kevin Love became basically a role player. And it's interesting because Kevin Love, before he went to Cleveland, was a phenomenal stat stuffer at least, right? Right. I, I remember ESPN.com, Rob G, had him ranked seventh in the league as the be- the seventh best player in the league one preseason. And that wasn't crazy at that time. No, nah, because he was putting up numbers. you see the numbers like numbers. that, you're right. like, who else can put up numbers like that? Right. And the team, you, people say, oh, they didn't make the playoffs. But they were close, and they were in the West when the West was far better than the East. Yes. So in the East, they would have been uh, fighting for home court advantage in the first round. So, there, and then, of course, when he gets with LeBron, he becomes the role player. 17 and 8, which I always argue, 17 and 8 or 9, not bad for a third option, but he was very inconsistent. And Rob G, here's the thing. When Kyrie left, Kevin Durant, who had not been good in the finals against Golden State with Kyrie there, when Kyrie left in 2018, they got swept. But Kevin Durant or Kevin Love averaged 19 and 11 in that series. So my point is he was still capable of putting up big numbers, but because he became the third option when Kyrie was there, he didn't. And so I think that LeBron didn't like maximize the other players around him to the greatest that they could have been. He's so great. He could put a team on his back. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think, I think if you are a role player, if you are a Contavious Caldwell Pope, Matthew Della Della Vadova, you are a, a Tristan Kyle Thompson, Kyle Corver, whatever. If you can say, look, your job on this team, play defense, you rebound, you hit open jump shots, you set screens for me. That's all your you go focus on these three things, whatever it is your role is on that team. And I promise you, either we're gonna contend or you're gonna get paid after we do something. Right. Big. Like you're that, gonna be better than ever. Exactly. That that's what's how that's how Tristan Thompson was getting these big deals. Right. Matthew Della Vadova got a fat contract that everyone immediately regretted because he did a good job of playing defense and being a hard worker on a LeBron James yep. team. Yep. However, if you are a all star level talent, the chances are you're gonna have to take a big step back if you're gonna fit alongside LeBron James. No, that's just the truth. Be- that's just the truth. Because unlike Michael Jordan, unlike Kobe Bryant, unlike pick whoever your favorite wing guard, all-time great player is, they all had a defined role in their offense. Michael Jordan was a scorer. Kobe was the scorer. You know, Shaq was the scorer. Whoever, whoever your guy is, LeBron was the point guard, <laughs> was the center, was the small forward. Like was he, the system. He did everything. Yep. So in order for him to be the best version of himself, you needed to take a step back. And I, and I think true. I think that's just the gift and the curse of LeBron James. And I think it's why, of all the great teammates that he's had, only two of them, in my opinion, have been able to be the best version of themselves alongside him, and that's AD and Kyrie. That's I think, fair. I think, and, right, because AD, his first year with LeBron was great. Right. Because he, he's right. great as a finisher. He was already a great defender. He was already a good rebounder. He could be AD with LeBron James. Dwayne right. Wade had to take a step back. Chris Bosh and Kevin Love had to take huge steps back. And Kyrie, maybe they would have been better had he taken more of a step back, but he was so young at that point in his career, he only knew one style of play. Right. And they still had a historic championship. Exactly. So it won in three years together. So that's not bad. Here's why I wouldn't say, though, Rob G., it was a disappointment. And you follow high school basketball, so you you will understand this. LeBron James is one of the few players that was a child or teenage prodigy 
that lived up to the billing. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is another one that comes to mind. But, Rob, we've seen O.J. Mayo. Oh, yeah. And, and, I mean, even a Derek character, who people probably haven't even heard of. Right? Former Laker Derek character. There you go. There are a ton of guys who in high school were the cat's meow. And they were supposed to be the next this and the next that and didn't live up to it. LeBron James is one of the few that lived up to it. And you can argue over, wow, he only had four championships. Should he have had more? But he's obviously one of the, a handful of the best players of all time. No matter who you are, you, well, some don't agree. But the overwhelming majority of people will give him that. I think he's the second greatest of all time. He's won four rings. He's won a championship everywhere he's been. Three, three different cities and franchises. So I, I, there's no way I could call his career a disappointment. He's going to end up as the all-time leading scorer. <laughs> and and top, the only one in the top 10 points and assists. And so there's no way I could say disappointment. But... Rob, you think about think about a lot of the great players. I'm not saying all of them, but Ja Morant, and he's young, but Murray State, right? Not even hardly recruited out of out of college right. or high school. Dwayne Wade went JUCO before he went to Marquette. Uh, Michael Jordan, the the famous story about right. not making his varsity team as a what as a sophomore, and even at North Carolina, I mean, nobody expect people thought he was crazy to go to North Carolina. You're not gonna play there. Um, Tim Duncan stayed four years at Wake Forest from the Virgin Island. You know, we can go oh, on he, and he'd on. He'd go undrafted nowadays if he went four years to Wake Forest. Right. I mean, so we go on and on about how many of the all-time greats, Akeem Olajuwon, may, if only because he started playing late, but still. So many of them were late bloomers, meaning they blossomed in college or the NBA, and surprise people, Giannis. I mean, I, it, they just keep coming to mind, right? Right. And LeBron is unique. Now, Magic's another one. You know, he was phenomenal in high school, and everybody knew it all over the country. And obviously, he was great at Michigan State, and he just continued that in the NBA. So there are some, but LeBron's in that small group, Rob G, of those that have lived up to the hype. So what you're saying then is... This may have been a backhanded compliment from Draymond Green. Well, like, yeah, I, you're look, the smartest player ever, but you know I got as many rings as you do, my friend. I, I think you are right in that. If indeed, and I, I just don't subscribe to Draymond's thinking, but yeah, I, it's kind of like when Steve Kerr said Kevin Durant is the most talented player ever. Yeah, but he only won he with them. He meant it as a compliment, <laughs> but it was like, yo, <laughs> why has he only got two rings? Exactly, he had to join up with the 73 win right. team to do it. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's like an insult. There's something wrong with him if he's the most talented <laughs> player ever. So, 